Last week, I got invited into a live stream podcast with Daniel Ponson, and oh my God, what a phenomenal opportunity to share a lot of psychology tips and at the same time, listen to amazing stories. I'm sharing with you here snippets of the live stream and more parts to be coming soon. This is the second episode of the series. If you have missed the previous episode, I'll link it up here in the card towards the end of this video so you can watch it. And also there will be a playlist for all the episodes for those of you who like binge watching. And of course, welcome back to creating your own new limitless world. Hello to the new faces. I am Joe Isaac, an Egyptian living in Sydney, Australia. If you wanna know more about me, Google my name or check the bio in the video description below. If you are enjoying this video so far, subscribe and activate the bell notification button so you don't miss out on the following parts of this series. This live stream was on fire. Oh, let's watch it together. Joined today with my good friend, Dr. Joe Isaac. Dr. Joe, welcome. From a psychological perspective, what is that? Uh, what is the change? What's happening to these people? Why are they doing it now? Well, very good thing. I'm just seeing a lot of comments here from people. Leanne, hello, and Carl. Thank you so much for tuning in from the United Kingdom. Before we had an excuse that I have no time. Now the excuse is over. And the people realized that whatever challenges that they were using before COVID-19, which kind of was not really working, they realized certainly the world has changed. So at times of adversity, of difficulty, the human beings reach a stage of what we call saturation. They've had the time now to think, and this is the time they actually break through. And I do remember when I was injured that I was in a very, very bad shape. It took me two years to get back on my feet. After nine months on bed rest, actually, I could not move. I was in coma for two and a half weeks. And you know what? My life has changed after this accident because I had the time to sit down and think about my future. Before that, I was kind of a robot that is tied into step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, sleep, next day, step 11, 12, and it's just, there was no time for me to actually think. So when I was in the hospital, I had a lot of time to just think. And this is how it changed my life and part of it, how I went into my postgraduate studies and I started to move into the traction of I got to help people to make a difference because I was so strong. I was so muscly. I was this, that. And then all of a sudden I nearly died just like that. And now I can't even feed myself because I was on a bed dressed like this. The only thing that can move was pretty much my eyes and my tongue. Nothing else can move, which made me so vulnerable to even feel that I need someone to feed me at my age. And for those people that you've mentioned, they may have reached that stage where they have the time to think. And time is one of the most valuable resources that we don't appreciate until we lose it. Okay, what can I do to survive? I'm just thinking about um, what you've said there about being in a, in a, in a coma and, and the big impact that it had on in your life. So as you reflect on who you are today and who you were before, what are some of these improvements that you've seen in your personality, in your personal characteristics? Because we're going to talk about confidence in a moment. And uh, are some people born with confidence? Are they born without it? Look, I, I really hope that this live doesn't go viral, <laughs> like some of my TikToks. <laughs> because I'm about to share with you, this is a friendly chat, and I was interested in you as a friend. I love your style, and I love how you help others. I'm about to share with you very personal stuff. Massive decision for an Egyptian person, import if you want, to make a decision. In our culture, we want to survive our relationships so you know we don't get married every day it's a one thing you want to go with it but at times if it's really not working you gotta call it off that's number one when that happened the person i was before i was already confident at that stage and i was comfortable with myself but i had some issues one of them was i cannot say no i feel bad to say no and hence why i was stuck in that relationship and i couldn't say no even though i know that it's not working and there's there's absolutely no improvement whatsoever not even that much progress so that's one one thing that has shaped me after the accident number two i really didn't appreciate life i did not appreciate going to the bathroom i'm sorry to say this but there are certain things, <clears throat> pardon me, there are certain things that we really, really don't appreciate until we lose them. And I have never thanked God or was grateful for being able to go to the bathroom and do my business. Never. After the accident, every single time to this day, this accident has been years ago, but to this day, I actually appreciate and I thank for being able to go to the bathroom because I was not able to do my business for eight days after I woke up from my coma and I started talking. I really appreciated that life can end any second nobody's big for death anybody can go 
just like that. And you don't have to be sick and you don't have to be anything. Can end in a second. The only question I want to ask myself, did I feel happy? Did I feel like I was able to help others? Did I feel like I left something behind? Now, my dad, unfortunately, God bless his soul, died a few months ago, last year. When my dad died, I could see that the change in my personality before the accident to after my accident is really crystallized. My dad left behind him so many people raising their hands, making prayers for him every single day because he fixed their life. And we used to have our own little joke, me and my dad, he said, you fix the people from the inside, I fix them from the outside. He was a cosmetic surgeon and an eye surgeon as well. So you actually do the operations, I'll work on their personalities and get them to be the best version themselves, etc. And together we can have the best team. He transforms them cosmetically and I do the psychological part. There were so many messages then that I could tell you that just God wanted me to survive. The injury I've had, there's only two doctors across Australia that can do this operation, only two across the country. It's a very complex procedure. So it happened to be Dr. Rafi Kasabian, that's his name. He was on duty that day and he's one of those doctors and also at the RPA, that's one. Look at the second funny part. When I fell, somebody came and the second person on the scene was actually a doctor, a general practitioner who first assessed my case. And he told the other person to call the ambulance. The ambulance was there in a peak hour in less than five minutes because I was very close to the RPA. And I was then taken down there. And before anything, Dr. Rafi Kasabian said, I think there's massive bleeding, internal bleeding. This guy's blood pressure is dropping like there's no tomorrow. Prepare the operation theater. There were so many, so many things happening in a row. A doctor receives me, somebody assists, the ambulance arrives quickly. One of the only two doctors that can do such an operation is on duty at the hospital. All of this to make me survive. So I had to think to myself, okay, there is gotta be a bigger cause why I had to survive something like this. And this is where I started to think and then I took the actions and so on that I shared with you. And now I go on social media, like, you know, I go lives, I put videos, all that stuff. I'm not making money from it. But the real happiness for me, I get comments from all around the world, people telling me, you know, you've changed my life. I look up to you, you're a mentor, this, that, etc. This is what I tell them. Thank you so much for paying me because that's the payment I'm looking for. Now when I die, I feel like I left something behind just like my dad. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Question of the day. What is your best takeaway from this video? Let me know and keep the conversation flowing in the comments. That's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next part. Be an active member in our community and do your part by subscribing, liking, and sharing this content with similar like-minded friends of yours. Thank you for being awesome and for watching. And until then, I will see you on the next one.